What's up, everybody? Andy here with John Hack. Uh, we're going to go over a basic deadlift tutorial, a quick setup uh, and how to execute it. Um, we're not going to go too much into detail about like, you know, some uh, like problem solving, different weaknesses and different um, problems. Um, today will just be the basic of how to set it up. And um, so chat, uh, John will be our demo guy today. Uh, we try to find someone stronger, but this, he was the only one available. So work with what we got. So here we go. All right, so the first step or tip we're gonna go over is stance, the stance width. Uh, obviously with most of these tips, everyone's gonna be different depending on their size or height or leverages, all that stuff. Uh, but generally with stance, you wanna start with uh, how your feet would be if you're gonna try and do a vertical jump um, or kind of just in line with your hip bones. Uh, so for John, he's right there. So that's pretty, pretty normal for John. Is that, that's where you typically like it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then as far as where you want your feet uh, in reference to the bar, um, you want the bar to be over the center of your foot because that's to the center line. Um, if you have it too far forward, the bar won't rise up in the air until it's uh, under you. Uh, I mean, it, it could if you're super strong, but the heavier it goes, the harder it is to pull. Uh, if it's out in front of you. So no matter what, the bar needs to go, it's gonna go back to where ideally where the center, center of your pole is, and then it'll rise up. So the more you can start with it already uh, in the middle of your foot, the better. But for some people, depending on how their, you know, their lengths are or their leverages. Uh, so if you have really long femurs, when you bend down, they're gonna kick it forward. Or if you're really big and have a big midsection, um, you can't really, <laughs> get down tight that much. Um, so you might start a little bit more forward, um, but ideally this is where you want it. Um, so like for me or John, I, I, I look over the bar and I see that the bar is covering like the third shoelace hole, um, but just depends on what you're wearing, all that stuff. But um, that's, like I said, that's the ideal uh, starting position uh, for the bar over your foot. And as far as uh, your toes and your feet and how they should be uh, 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 positioned, um, generally just straight ahead is fine, uh, slightly out, some people even go in. Uh, it just depends on what you're more comfortable with. Uh, so that's one of these things where you want to play around and, and do with, uh, or go with what you feel more comfortable with. Um, obviously the bigger you are, I think if you widen out or turn out your toes a little bit, it gives you a little more room uh, in between your legs for your gut to go through. Uh, but generally just start with this straight, but that can change. Uh, throughout your, the course of your, your lifting career too. So, but just start with straight ahead and then, and then just try it out. All right, so the second step, our tip, we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna do the grip. Um, so the grip, there's many ways, three ways to grip it. Uh, there's double overhand, and then there's hook grip, and then the, the more common use is over under. Um, I think over under is the easiest to be consistent at. Uh, the double overhand without the hook, uh, you, you're just very limited. There's gonna be a certain weight where you can't handle that. And then the hook grip, that also depends on how much, number one, how much pain you can tolerate and how your fingers and thumbs are built uh, and your skin too, that's another factor. Uh, but today we'll just cover over and under. Um, John likes to do over under. And as far as where you grip it, you want to be as close as possible uh, inside, but you don't want to be uh, inside your legs or touching your knee because when you go down, you'll, you'll kick your arms forward. <laughs> or if it's inside here, you're just you're not going to be able to uh, be in a good position. Uh, so I would suggest just as go as close as you can while just barely touching your outer thigh. And for John, that's where that he's set up right there. If you're, obviously, if you're a bigger person, you might have to go wider. Um, but the closer you can get, the less uh, range of motion you can get, or you have to cover. All right, our third tip is gonna be bracing and tension. Um, you want to be able to brace your core and tense your body as tight as possible. That way, uh, you'll have the maximum amount of force to be applied to the bar going up. So it's kind of like looking at it as like a, a rope. You know, you want the road to be 
be straight and taut before you pull it up. Otherwise, if you just yank it, you're not gonna get as much uh, direct pull out of that. Um, so, let's start with uh, the lats and his arms. So go ahead and grab the bar, John. So, how we create tension, uh, the most important part on the upper body, uh, we're gonna be the lats. So how do you create tension and tighten up the lats? Well, first thing, you can rotate your arms. This twists the shoulder, externally rotates it, and that activates the lat. Okay, so basically, I, I, I say turn your elbows back, or you can think, externally rotate your shoulders. Also, you want to cover your armpit. Like if I was trying to tickle John, you want to cover that up. So you're squeezing your tricep into his lat. So if you feel that this is really tight, all that. So that is activating his lats. Okay, relax a little bit. And then as far as uh, bracing and then the core, uh, you don't need to take a huge breath. Uh, you just want to be able to tighten it down. Um, but how do you tighten your core? Do you just... Uh, I'm using belt, I push out against push it. Push against it? Yeah. Okay. I guess if I'm beltless, yeah, I just kind of tighten my whole core, I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. And then where do you, where do you brace? From up here, or you yeah, can I, down. I do it at the top. Um, it's hard for me to get a breath in at the bottom. I know a lot of people like to kind of do the pumps, yeah. But um, you just need to find out what works for you. Yeah, e either way is is not wrong, um, because if you're down there and you're crunched over a little bit, it's, it might might be a little harder to get a breath and brace. Uh, or you know, I do that. I can get it down here, or I I'll sit back a little bit, brace, and then pull myself into position. John is able to do it at the top, then get down. His setup is a little bit faster, so he doesn't waste a lot of energy and time. Um, but like I said, everyone's a little bit different. And as far as how to brace and core, that's gonna be a whole other video because it's a little bit more complicated and, and involved with that. But this is the time when you do it, is when you're down there set up, bracing, you want tension in the core and the lats. And then finally, as far as the lower body, you want to kind of like tens tension and uh, activate your hamstrings and glutes. Um, one way to do that is like as you're going down, you're kind of doing like an RDL and you're, you're loading it. So that's how you feel it if you can't like act automatically up, uh, activate it by yourself. But that's how you wanna, you wanna feel that. So as John goes to set up, he's tightening everything. Uh, shoulders, lats, his core is already tight. There's tension here, and he's already, he's like a spring. Everything's tight, and he's ready to go. Okay, and then uh, another thing too, uh, so John, when he's ready to pull, another tension thing is he is really screwing his feet into the floor. He's gripping the floor with his toes. And so from the, from the foot all the way up to the body, it's a total body movement where he's tensing everything, like I said. Um, and then there's also the tension in the bar. So these bars, with enough weight, there's gonna be a lot of uh, slack or bend in it. Um, but if you're at a lighter weight, there won't be much bending. But if you hear this click, on every bar, that's the, the bar into the sleeve, it's tensioning it. So you wanna pull that tension out and then pull. So like I said, everything needs to be tight, everything's be already taut, and then you explode. Okay, so next we're talking about hip positioning. Um, where your hip is when the bar starts to rise, that's where ideally where you want your hips to be. Um, if you start too low, you're gonna initiate the pull, but then your hips will rise until that, that stop when the bar comes off the floor. So you don't wanna waste energy uh, starting down low and then coming up and then finding that spot and then going up. So ideally you wanna start where the hips uh, are when the bar rises. So for John, if he starts too low, so if he starts more of a squat and comes up, he's already losing that, that energy trying to squat it up, but his, the bar won't move until his hips are in the right spot. Okay. And if he starts too high, then it's going to become like a Romanian deadlift. His back's not as flat. it be way more uh, pressure in the back and his hips. So for him, his ideal spot right there and so this is where he initiates the pull uh, he likes to pull his body and his hips under the bar and you see this is gonna be like a hinge it's gonna open up like this okay you want to do that John
Also, this is kind of like, you can relax a little bit, this is kind of like, this is like a, a deadlift jack. You're inserting the jack into the bar and you're leveraging it up. So he's gonna leverage up and open up his body and bring the bar up with it. And also with, so with hip positioning, after the bar leaves the floor, you wanna be, already be thinking about bringing your hips through. Uh, that way, like I said, is it more like a, a lever and just bringing the, the bar up and then your hips through. Um, if you do it late, so like John will show you, you're gonna end up leaning back and then your legs very, very often will unlock when you're leaning back. Okay, so this is not an ideal position. You're also increasing the range of motion needed to deadlift. The better you get at pulling your hips through early, it will create a shorter distance for the bar versus leaning back and then locking out. That would be a lot more range of motion and more energy that you're expending to complete the lift. All right guys, so that covers our basic uh, deadlift setup and execution. Uh, we have the steps, we have uh, your stance, your grip, your tension, uh, bracing, and your hip positioning and bring your hips through early. So those are kind of the basics um, that get you started. A lot of times the basics are what uh, we need to work on 99% of the time. The details, like little details that you want to focus on after, that's that's the that's what we can worry about after you've perfected these things. Um, me and John, we still work, have to work on these things uh, sometimes, uh, even after deadlifting for a long time. So focus on these basics first and then worry about the little details after that.